Welcome on board the Celebrity Infinity. We're gonna spend the next week sailing the Eastern Mediterranean. We're currently in Italy, in Ravenna. And this video, uh, we'll show you off a little bit of the ship, but there's a full ship tour on our YouTube channel. We're gonna show you all the different ports and what it's like to sail in the Eastern Mediterranean. But first, let's talk about Ravenna, where we started. Technically says Venice, but we're nowhere near Venice as you can tell. So let's back up a few hours, and explain how we started on this cruise. Ravenna is located on the east coast of Italy, about an hour, hour and a half south of Venice. Now it's a small little town that really doesn't have a lot from a tourism perspective. Cruise lines only started coming here recently uh, once they got kicked out of Venice. So there's no chain restaurants here, no chain hotels yet. I'm sure that's all coming with the cruise ships. So it's kind of a quiet town, not a lot to do. We spent a, a day and a half there and that was probably more than enough. The main attraction in town from a tourism standpoint is visiting these old churches with some incredible mosaic artwork. There's about four or five churches. You can pay to go in one individually or get a, a, a pass to go see each of them. They're not very big. They won't take you that long. So again, this is a great activity. We did it before we boarded because obviously you can't board the ship until early afternoon. So it's something to do if you're looking to kill a few hours in Ravenna before you board the ship. Some of the cruise lines, as they're ramping up uh, their operations in Ravenna, have transfers from the, air, the larger airports. We flew in to Lagonia and took a train about an hour-ish from Lagonia over to Ravenna. And then after spending our time in Ravenna, the, that morning of the cruise, we booked a cab to go to the port. Now, it's worth noting... Uh, of course, it's not as convenient as you'd hope. The train station is nowhere near the port. The port is actually a working industrial port uh, that's not really made for cruise ships yet. So you can't even walk to it. Um, if you do take the train to Ravenna, you're going to want to transfer via cab to the port itself. Um, our cruise line did offer transfers, uh, a bus transfer, but it's quite expensive. Um, it did book up really fast. It's probably cheaper to just get a cab to head over to the port. It's about a 15 minute uh, car ride from the train station to the port itself. And we're at the terminal, getting ready to board, or lack thereof, uh, you know, with this kind of being a newer thing for uh, the ships uh, not coming to uh, Venice and now having to dock in Ravenna. There's not a cruise terminal yet, but it's under construction. I guess Royal Caribbean slash celebrity are doubling down and building a giant new cruise terminal here. It's set up as their like Eastern Mediterranean base. But uh, let's, let's head to the tent and check in. The makeshift tent terminal definitely gets both going out of Port Canaveral where it's a giant terminal. And here we go, boarding the ship. And we have arrived in Dubrovnik, Croatia. I'm going to show you a little bit of coming in right now from the helipad. Uh, somehow I got invited up to go on the helipad to watch uh, coming in, which was awesome. Great views, amazing uh, area, kind of snake through a couple islands to get into town. So that was really well worth it. Though very hot, cool coming by the bridge and uh, kind of backing into the dock and everything. So that was awesome. And now we're taking a shuttle. So we docked about, about uh, 15 minutes outside of town. Shuttles were $15 a person round trip and it takes us right to the city center. We bought our shuttle tickets, guest services once we were on board. Walking in, this is really awesome looking. Look at like the detail up there. Going across the drawbridge. <laughs> All to go through this tiny little porthole here. And we are in the old city inside the walls. 
It's crowded. It's hot, but it's also Europe in the summer. So if you come here this time of year, that's what you gotta expect. I do want to point out just, you know, quaint old. And then there's a sign for the Hard Rock Cafe. Lots of stairs. This thing's like a maze. I'm trying to find this bar. Our GPS isn't working great, so we're relying on good old compass, knowing what direction we need to go. So that is Booza Bar. It's built into the side of the walls here, overlooking this small little cliff diving area. Cheap beers, like six, seven bucks, cheap considering the location, but it is cash only, so if you do come, Make sure to bring some cash. Uh, service was fast, easy to find a good seat. Uh, it does face sunset view, so I'm sure at night it gets really crowded, but here in the middle of the afternoon, perfect. Walking down from Booza Bar back into uh, the city. Lots of steps, lots of steps. Really important to note after the Booza Bar, I'd be failing you if I didn't tell you this. There's no bathrooms there, so after you have a few uh, cold ones, you're probably gonna need to go to the bathroom. There are some public toilets right over here, kind of by uh, a little bit of a walk from Booza Bar itself, kind of by the marina. Uh, they are one euros, they're kind of hidden. We walked by them a few times uh, right there, but that's the old city walk out of this thing, turn immediately left. And they're there. You'll thank me later. Trust me, I know this isn't good video content, but you'll thank me. Views in this town are amazing. Uh, this is by the marina here. Shows you just how big the old city is and how just incredible the views are and how they just go on and on and on. The entire city, everything that you've been seeing is inside these walls. So it's like you're driving around here and you're like, oh, that's just a wall, maybe a fort. No, there's the full old city on the other side of those walls, which makes it a little confusing to get around because, uh, you know, you can't just be like, I wanna go to the restaurant right there. You have to go all the way down and around and through. So it takes a little extra time to get around here because there's only a few entrances into the old city. Pretty sure Dubrovnik translates to the city of steps because everywhere you go up, down, up, down steps. Just outside the old city, there is a cable car that takes you really high up on top of the mountain for an amazing view. And there's a restaurant, so let's check that out. Went to the top of the cable car and uh, just showing off real quick the view from up here of what the rest of Croatia looks like, not just by the water and uh, giant mountains. Really cool. At the top of the cable car, we are dining at the, what is it, Panorama? Panorama restaurant. Uh, got this really great cocktail using Havana Club, which you can't get in the US, so that's fun. Um, Worth noting, there, there's different terraces. Uh, we booked a second row, uh, but we were given first row when we showed up, but this place will book up weeks in advance. So uh, look it up online, book it ahead of time, because um, then you can reserve the seats you want, the ones that overlook the view and give you this awesome view of the old city there. Taking in the key attraction here, walking the city walls. It's hot. There's a lot of steps, but it's a great looking town. This path literally goes all the way around. You can see it all the way over there. The walls are awesome, but it, you got to be in some kind of physical condition to really enjoy these. There is steps everywhere. If you think that low line house right there, that's where we got on uh, the wall. So we probably walked I think 40 or 50 steps up so far. But the view is awesome. So cool to see like a guarded city like this. I would say if there's one small knock on the town, while it looks very, very cool, it is a lot of tourist junk stores. Uh, you know, funny t-shirts, funny hats, stuff like that. Uh, not a lot of like higher end stuff, uh, but I mean, you do have all these like cool views and stuff. So it does make up for it. 
but uh, just don't come here expecting like the highest end shopping in the old city. And that wraps up our quick port stop in Drabubnik. We are going to take this shuttle back to the cruise port. And call it a day after a lot, a lot, a lot of stairs. The shuttle drops us off right here at the dock. Super easy, highly recommend it. It's interesting, they don't talk about the shuttle anywhere on their website. Anywhere we didn't hear about it until last night, the cruise director was like, oh, by the way, the shuttle, $15. So uh, you get on board, uh, ask about it. Seems like most cruise lines do have a shuttle, even though you don't talk about it. That wraps up it. First full day on the cruise here in Dubrovnik. What you'll see next is our day at sea before we head over to the Greek Isles. Just have to show off this beautiful sunset. Weather's perfect. Cruise is docked right in the city's main harbor. Great view of like the mountains out that way too. Dead Sea, Adriatic Sea to be exact. Sailing around to the Greece to uh, get over to Santorini. We did go through a time change last night, so we jumped the hour ahead. We lost an hour. So everyone's gonna get off to a little bit of a later start today. A lot of hanging by the pool, relaxing. Got some fun stuff to show you later on today. Our day at sea activity uh, was something we booked months in advance. And while a lot of people will do spa visits or massages, we did a cocktail making class at the Martini Bar. This was, I believe, $30. We got to make two cocktails, and then they provided us a cocktail at the end. So three cocktails for 30 bucks, plus some entertainment of actually being able to go behind the bar. It wasn't like they just showed us how to make it. They, they told us how to make it, and then it actually had us go behind the bar itself and pour the drinks ourselves, um, which was really cool. Uh, and they taught us kind of why some drinks are made certain ways. So formative and a couple drinks for 30 bucks, well worth the money. Good morning from Santorini. Woke up with the boat parked parade right here, talking about a great view. Now becomes, now starts the little bit of a tedious process to get all the way up there. So. Basically, you have to tender over. You can see the tenders going off that Royal Caribbean ship going over. No, no ship docks right there. So, gotta wait for a tender, uh, and then once you get there, you can either walk up that giant pathway or take the cable car. And uh, we'll see how long the lines are uh, since there's two ships in port today. Uh, but I'm gonna let you go because we gotta go get a number for the tender. It's kind of like a take a number. They call your number uh, so everyone doesn't just crowd down in a giant line. As I said, they call out numbers. It's a, it's a really cool, like, we're in the middle of, we call it surrounded 360 by, pretty much 360 by the, uh, these uh, rock formations. And when you think about it, like, that cruise ship is 12, 13 stories, it shows you how tall up there that is. The boat got here at 8.30, that's when the first tender was, and uh, we waited to about 10 o'clock because we have late dinner reservations. That was the uh, the prime move. When we got our ticket to come on the tender, we only had to wait about five minutes, and as you can see, this one's not even that busy. It's a whole upper floor, too. And we got over here for a giant, 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 giant line. We're also a theme park channel, so we love going to theme parks. And this, you know, has a very low capacity. I think like 500 people an hour. So we're gonna to try to take a boat to a different city and get up that way. We recommend that because this line looks miserable. We're able to bypass this line. Uh, 60 euros total for two people, 30 apiece. Takes you to Ia, the other city by a boat, then buses you up to the top so you can skip this cable car line because this is the only way to get up. So real quick, this was a good and bad decision. The boat waits until it's full to leave. So we ended up waiting about 45 minutes for the boat to get full. But hey, we were at least waiting in the sun for the cable car. And then when it dropped you off on the other side, you still had to walk up probably uh, 100 feet, 200 feet out of elevation to get to where the bus was. Not perfect, but hey, we didn't have to wait in a long line. 
two hours after we left the boat, we finally made it to the top of the It's taking you two hours from the boat. Get here. There's two main cliff cities in Santorini. Fira, which you'll see in a few minutes, and Ia, which you're looking at right now. Ia is definitely the more photogenic uh, one, the one that you'll see in all your promotional photos and the Instagram shots, whitewashed, blue roofs. It's what you think of in Santorini, but it was very crowded. Definitely worth coming over to this one though. This is what you wanna see. Lots of great views, uh, basically. It's great views, shopping, a mix of tourist junk, probably half tourist junk, and half the artwork that actually does look pretty nice, uh, and restaurants. So you put, just come along and there's this kind of main promenade that you can walk. You can actually walk all the way back over to Fira if you wanted to, but the city, there's great views. After about 30 minutes of walking around and a quick lunch, which was actually reasonably priced, we jumped on a bus to Fira, then transferred to another bus to take us to one of the island's wineries. There's a few of them. We went to Vento Santos. Uh, where they showed us how the vines actually grow low to the ground. Um, they have to do that because of the wind and the lack of rain. There's some unique things there. They're in the process of harvesting, which was really neat. And then the whole tour ended, as you would expect, with a wine tasting, with a charcuterie board, and some amazing, amazing views. Best views of a winery probably ever. That's Fira straight out ahead there on that cliff. And then Ia, where we were just at far in the distance. And we made it up to the top in Fira, kind of the more, less traditional kind of town. You know, Ia is going to be more your white colored domes and kind of what you see in all the picture books. Picture books, I don't even know why I said that. I don't even know that's a thing. Uh, cool, you can see like some other islands out there, but Fira is kind of the, the main central area. This is where you'll ride the cable car up to, so if you are just coming up here for a quick little bit from the cruise. Cable car would take you somewhere up into this area and uh, you would be exploring this town, but definitely would recommend going over to Ia as well. Cause you can see, still looks cool over here, but not that classic vibe that you expect from Santorini. Lots of jewelry stores here. And lots of steps. Be prepared to walk. The last stop was something we booked months in advance because it does fill up. It was PK's Cocktail Bar for sunset. You can see the uh, clouds unfortunately blocked our view, but we booked a front row, literally view, overlooking the cruise ships and where the sun would have set. Today we are in the Greek island of Rhodes. And as you can see, First thing to take note of is after having to take a boat into Brubnik, or a bus into Brubnik, and a boat in Santorini, two boats in Santorini, and then a bus, this you can actually walk right off and head into the old city. Kind of see what's interesting about this uh, port is there's this old city here that is completely surrounded by big stone wall. So, kind of give you a lay of the land. The old city has a lot of kind of tacky tourist uh, shops. Uh, once you get a little further back into it, it does have some a uh, little bit nicer restaurants, some pretty good food options. But immediately when you walk in, and you can kind of see when you get off the boat here, you have to walk quite a bit right around that area. It's kind of blocked right now. Um, there's only so many entrances into the wall. So the old city is definitely worth exploring. Uh, gotta get it, kind of gotta get around the tourist crap. We then did a hop on, hop off bus that took us all around the old city and then up to the top of some of those hills there. Hop on and hop off bus was actually pretty convenient. We had to wait a little bit for it, but it drove us all around it, uh, outside the kind of the city limits to where there's a, a 2,000 year old Olympic amphitheater where there's a Acropolis amphitheater up at the top. We got to see a little part of the island too, where it was, um, uh, you see a lot of beaches on the other side. Uh, that's what you can kind of see on this side here of the old city, on the other side of the hill, and on this far end of the old city, outside the walls, 
it's all beach resort. It, it looks like quite the, the resort town, a lot of beach restaurants, a lot of people on the beach. At night, we visited one of the specialty restaurants, La Petite Chef. By specialty, yes, there is an upcharge for this, but it's this really cool projection mapping show where the entire table is white. What you're seeing here, this little guy, little chef walk around, uh, is being projected down the table, and he would prepare a dish you know, via the production, and then they would literally come and set the dish he prepared right down on the table. Uh, it was a really cool experience. It took about an hour and a half. There was a little bit of a set menu, um, so there's not tons of options. There's a couple options that go along with the projections, but if you wanted to sub something out, obviously the projections wouldn't match, but if you're a picky eater like me, they would match just fine. It was my birthday, so they brought a cupcake, and you can see uh, they projected it right on the plate. Next up was Kuadasi Turkey, which is actually considered Asia. It's in the part of Turkey that's on the other side of Istanbul. So one stop in Asia. For some of us in the group, this was our first time in Asia. Uh, this board, uh, while it's a beach town and there's some activities to do right around the ship, the main attraction here is Ephesus, this ancient town that was occupied by the Romans, by the Greeks at times. If... Uh, you're religious, you probably heard this town before. It's mentioned in the Bible a number of times. Some of the apostles have gone there. Uh, pets roam freely, uh, or should I say animals, but uh, it's good to know that the uh, Turkish government, we were told, takes care of all these dogs and cats, vaccinates them, gives them food, keeps them healthy. So that's cool when you're seeing that in the video here. Uh, it was very, very crowded. We got there first thing, but as you can imagine, this being the main attraction when you are in this port, there's two giant cruise ships docked. Everyone's going there. And it got very hot very fast because you can see there's no shade. And it's basically like marble ground, which just radiates the heat. But overall, incredible ruins. You know, I've seen Rome. I've seen other ruins. And this was probably my favorite just because of the pure scale and the history of how old some of this is. I mean, this dates back thousands of years, which is absolutely incredible. Quick wrap up on the day in port. Um, for those who don't want to tour, uh, you know, there is some, some beach areas here. It seems like a lot of people maybe came back to the boat early because uh, by mid-afternoon, the pool area was completely full. But I do just want to kind of show you off the port area here. It's actually quite a nice port. Um, so you'd come off and you actually walk along the pathway there. And this over here is a, a bazaar, um, uh, a market bazaar, but um, this one's behind the, the, the security gates of the port, which is that you know, arch over there. So, you know, there's still, uh, they warned us, there's still a risk of fake goods and such being in these shops, but these shops can be a little bit more trusted. I do want to call it, there's some, some restaurant options. You can see quite a bit on the water there. There's even a KFC, so if you're, craving some uh, good old fried chicken in the middle of your European trip. Uh, you can snag some there. And then once you get out of the port, there's a bunch more restaurants and uh, there's, uh, there's a more traditional Turkish uh, bazaar um, kind of up by where the, that castle looking thing is, which is a short, you know, three or four minute walk. You can get cabs here. You could get a cab to Ephesus. You get a cab to wherever you really needed to go uh, from the port as well. And then coming back in, uh, this brand new looking uh, port building here, they had a full uh, duty free shop that you might be used to uh, at the airport. Um, and, that, and here's the pro tip. This is where you're gonna wanna really pay attention on the video they as you walk into this building that's where they do the security screening for the boat so if you're following along with me here you can buy whatever you want in the duty free shop and take it on board so i mean they have all kinds of booze in there just like i said it's just like an airport you know they have rum bourbon everything in there that you could buy and carry right on the ship um also a lot of snacks uh you know, local candies and, and such. So uh, give yourself a couple extra minutes to look through that. Uh, prices were pretty good, really good. You could get a, a nice bottle of Havana Club rum for 20 bucks to bring on board if you wanted to. So that wraps up a uh, quick visit here. Really not much to do in this town unless maybe you want to walk to beaches. But if you're coming here, you definitely want to go to Ephesus. It's a, you know, very unique historic site. And that also wraps up our, our one day of this cruise that's technically on the Asia continent. 
Our last port was Nephilio back in Greece. Now this was a tender port um, and this kind of like mountainy beachside town. So it took about 10, 15 minutes to get over to the town. And once we got over there, we looked at a hop on hop off bus. Though I would caution you that uh, it was really not hop on hop off. It, they advertised it that way, but it wasn't. Um, but there, the city itself had kind of like a beachside vibe to it. Um, the bus did take us up the giant mountain you saw in those first shots to where there was a, a castle fort at some point. Um, and that's where we got off and we decided to explore that and walk back down into the city. But absolutely beautiful views. The castle, you know, up super high. You got to see, um, you know, And then we decided to walk down because we wanted to end up on this side of town. Uh, it was about 900 steps, but thankfully there was like kind of a wall next to it most of the time, but still it was quite the hike down, but provided some incredible views of the cruise ship and this side of the town. So definitely worth walking down. Don't think I'd walk up, but uh, that's why we took the bus ups. But our main goal was to get down to the walking path. You can see the walking path had incredible views of the ship, the area in general, but unfortunately, despite all the cool Instagram photos and photos we saw in advance of this, it was vandalized quite heavily. You see the graffiti everywhere, which is one thing, but you know, it was just bushes laying on the road, you know, branches, all the lights were knocked out. So it was really disappointing that what could have been one of the most iconic views of the trip was really run down. We ended the day walking around the town itself. And, you know, while it was okay, you know, there's some nice aspects to it. We did visit it in September, kind of after the main summer season. And we noticed a lot of the beachfront restaurants and some of the shops themselves were also closed for the season. So that probably didn't help us uh, appreciate the city more. We only ended up spending a few hours in the port and that was kind of nice, you know, after the long day yesterday in Ephesus, walking around all day, we actually wanted to have some time to come back and read on the ship and just hang out. So definitely not a long port, um, but beautiful views, 360 almost. That brings us to the end of the cruise, Athens, Greece. Now, a lot of cruise ships, if you're searching for an Eastern Mediterranean cruise, will either start or end here. Some some of them do round trips out of Athens, some are start or end. And it's a, it's a pretty nice cruise terminal, uh, pretty big, about 30 minutes from the core Athens city center. No public transportation from what I could tell, but plenty of cabs as soon as you walked out of the terminal. We, pro, we pre-booked ours. Um, to specifically take us to a few of the key sites before dropping us off at the hotel. And that's how we're going to end the video here is uh, visiting a couple of the key sites in Athens. After our 25, 30 minute cab ride, we have a ride at the Acropolis and uh, are starting the long hike up there. At least it's a little cooler. Uh, we did buy our tickets in advance, so I think we can skip this line up there. So that's, that's always the key with these European uh, attractions. You buy your tickets in advance, or you have your tour guide get them for you. So you don't have to stand in long lines. It's also worth noting, very, very, very important. They just recently, as in a few weeks ago, changed the entrance policy for here. And you have to book times in advance. It's a little bit more, a little bit more steps to go through. It helps limit the lines and people going in. So. Let's keep walking up this hill. It was very, very crowded. And this is at about 9 a.m. And it only got more crowded as the day went on. So get there early or stay late. But this was awesome. Lived up to all the hype that you would imagine and hope for when seeing these famous sites in central Athens. We took about an hour-ish there. And that was partially due to how crowded it was. It was hard to get around at some points. Um, you could probably spend a lot more time there if you're a big history buff, but for us, uh, an hour, hour and a half uh, was probably all we really needed to get a good feel of it. Our cab driver then took us over to the Olympic Stadium, site of the first modern day Olympic Games. Now the stadium site is thousands of years old, but the current iteration that you see here is only a couple hundred. 
but still very cool to see. We just looked at from the outside versus paying to get in because you can see most of it right there. Then our cab driver said, hey, I want to take you up to this really cool lookout point. One of the highest points in all of Athens. You can see the Parthenon in the distance, just awesome sight from above. We then went and saw the changing of the guard, which was this really neat little ceremony um, in front of one of the government buildings. It was really great to have a tour. Uh, it wasn't a tour guide. It was a taxi cab driver, but he had some tour guide guy qualities to him and was like hey let's swing over here let's check this out and he was telling us a little bit about the history along the way we were done touring athens by about noon and spent the rest of the day exploring it on foot now i would say athens does get a pretty bad rap or probably some of it deserved for some safety concerns so be sure to do your research on what areas to stay in what areas to walk around we mainly hung out around the parthenon area and as you can see here, this area was just really cool looking. One of our favorite cities we visited, just the culture, the architecture, right, us, right alongside some ancient sites was awesome to take in. We love checking out cocktail bars when traveling and Baba Al Rum, just in like the kind of trendy restaurant district, was voted one of the top 50 in the world. So we had to go, especially since it has a little bit of a tiki vibe going on. Really cool place. Highly, highly recommend. And that will wrap up our week long cruise across the Eastern Mediterranean. A couple highlights, recap notes here. Dubrovnik in Croatia was the highlight for sure. That's one of the places that are on top of our list to go back to explore Croatia more. It was just a really great food, atmosphere, culture, the mountains, the water, absolutely incredible. Definitely want to go back there. Greece, I would say, unless you're a huge, huge fan of Greece, um, I don't know how many Greek islands I need to go to. They were really cool looking, but you know, Santorini is on its class of its own. That was awesome. But the other two were meh. And then I would also shout out Ephesus. This is a port you don't hear much about, uh, but the ancient ruins there are really cool. And then, of course, Athens. This is a city that, like I said, gets a little bit of bad rap about safety. Maybe some of it deserved, but we actually really liked Athens, and that was became one of our favorite European cities. So make sure you spend a little bit of time in Athens if you're traveling across the eastern Mediterranean. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll have several other videos about this cruise diving into the ports a little bit more on the channel. We have a full ship tour, and we have a lot of other cruise content on our channel. So be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks.